So, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jim Ranahan, and I am actually learning all about Leamington history at the moment. So this day is very, very helpful to me. And thank you to the um, history group for staging it. So I'm, look, I'm learning about Leamington's history and specifically through the people who make that history, who record it and who study it. Uh, today, I represent uh, Warwickshire Local History Society. And as this is a county-wide society, I need to reflect on history across the, the whole of Warwickshire. Uh, my talk today considers Leamington Spa from this angle and specifically the contribution of people from Leamington Spa to research in, into history for the county. Now, you will probably have gathered that I'm from Birmingham and my encounters with the history of Leamington Spa come through, through three main routes. The first is, um, and as you can see, the logos are on the screen. Um, the first route is the Local History Society, Warwickshire Local History Society, where I am the lecture program secretary. Um, as the Local History Society is the umbrella group for um, smaller societies and groups across the county, um, I've benefited from their work, um, including, as I say, Leamington History Group. Um, the second icon is uh, for the Dugdale Society. Um, uh, you'll see William Dugdale up there. Now, I'm a personal member of the Dugdale Society and I don't represent them in any official capacity. But I just wanted to highlight their research into original documents relating to the county and the study of local history across the county. And Leamington people have been important um, over the uh, 100 years of the Dugdale Society. And then the third icon, Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, where I work as an archivist and where I regularly encounter references to the history of Lemton Spa and its people. And I'll say more about that later on. And whilst I'm mentioning the Birthplace Trust, I also need to flag the tremendous resources available for Leamington history at the County Record Office in Warwick and at the Modern Record Centre at Warwick University. Thank you. So um, the photograph on screen uh, shows Joan Lane, um, who was a significant person a resident in Leamington Spa. She was significant in historical research um, into the local area, across the county, and indeed nationally. Now, Joan regarded herself as a student of history, but she didn't consider herself to be um, either a maker of history or a recorder of history, although, of course, her publications have added to the record um, that informs study. And in her own way, she did indeed make history within the county. Joan died in 2001, but is fondly remembered, and her legacy continues through the many publications that she, she contributed to and authored and edited, and the researchers that she inspired to explore a whole range of historical endeavor, um, which she was connected with. And that was local history, social history, medical history, and the history of sport. Joan was a senior teaching fellow at Warwick University. She was also general editor of the Dugdale Society, and indeed she edited herself many key publications uh, relating to the county, including Coventry Apprentices and their masters, together with occasional papers such as uh, Butler's Marston. And her work around Butler's Marston is also reflected 
in publications for Warwickshire Local History Society, where she was an active researcher and a long-standing member. And uh, Joan is remembered with great fondness by colleagues at um, Warwickshire Local History Society. On screen are just a small selection of publications that Joan was associated with. Um, so at the centre is her 1996 work on John Hall and his patients. Um, John Hall, um, as, it, as it says, Shakespeare's son-in-law and um, a resident of Stratford. Um, and her work reflected both her local, her interest in local history and medical history. Um, at the screen on the left, Dr. Jefferson of Leamington Spa, and that's Eric Baxter's work, which was co-edited after his death, after Baxter's death, by um, Joan and Robert Beerman, um, and is an, an occasional paper of the Local History Society. Whilst DJ Mitchell's History of the County Council, which is up on the screen, was published through Joan's careful supervision, prompting and encouragement, um, as recognised by Mitchell himself. Joan wrote extensively on local social and medical history. She published many, many books and her work also featured in publications such as Medical History Journal, Textile History Journal, Country Life, and the Veterinary Record. And of course, the journals and the occasional papers of Warwickshire Local History Society and Dugdale Society. The Local History Society has published the bibliography of Joan Bain, and that came out in 2003, and it's um, in the 2003 uh, edition of our journal, which is Warwickshire History. And here is a cover from a more recent edition of Warwickshire History. And the image on screen on, on the cover is John Brandard's engraving of the parade in Leamington. And it promotes an article by Jane Crew on the speculative development of the parade, Royal Leamington Spa, circa 1808 to 1838. Now, articles such as this provide an access point for people like myself um, into Leamington's history. I'm thinking more about this and the role of Warwickshire Local History Society in promoting such history has caused me to look at how the society engages with the town's history, with Leamington's history itself. And at this point, I just want to talk about the membership of Warwickshire Local History Society. Um, roughly a third of members um, live in Leamington Spa and the surrounding district. And then if we factor in Warwick and its surrounding area, this membership rises to about half of the total membership. And just to, just to quickly say that the rest of our membership is drawn from across the entire county the historical county, including Nuneaton, Rugby, Ulster, Stratford, Birmingham, Coventry, Solihull, and also far beyond our, bound, our county boundaries. I've looked at the last eight years uh, for which data is readily accessible, and I've analysed um, the um, focus of the articles within the journal within we within Warwickshire history. Um, so uh, for the, eight, the last eight years, 20% of um, the articles focused on the combined Leamington and Warwick area. Um, and basically that's 12% for Leamington and 8% for Warwick. 15% uh, focused on Stratford-upon-Avon. 15% on North Warwickshire, 
20% on the metropolitan area of Birmingham, Coventry, Solihull. And um, the county-wide focus of articles was 17%. And we have to bear in mind that for the county, for articles that take a county-wide view, Leamington and Warwick will often feature um, within those articles. And then the balance um, uh, relates to other locations within the county. Um, thinking about my own area of responsibility, the lectures, the lecture programmes, uh, the corresponding figures over the past eight years for Leamington and Warwick combined is 16%. For Stratford is 7%. North Warwickshire, 11%. The metropolitan area, Birmingham, Coventry, Solihull, is 9%. Countywide is 46%. And the balance for other locations is 11%. There are two points to draw out there. For the countywide um, lectures, they are thematic. And again, um, there will often be references to uh, Leamington and Warwick within within those lectures, and then within the um, the figure for um, Leamington and Warwick, which looks healthy at sixteen percent, um, actually it is really sixteen percent for Warwick. And I was surprised to note that Leamington didn't feature in the last eight years worth of lectures specifically, but of course it does mention it does feature in the. Uh, thematic lectures for the county. As this is my area of responsibility, I need to um, understand what's going on and to address the imbalance. An imbalance which Joan Lane and her colleagues would not be happy with. And I ask you to help me by suggesting speakers and topics for future programmes and of course, the society also welcomes future articles on, on Leamington and subjects relating to the Leamington area for the journal Warwickshire History. And I'll just repeat the mantra. We're interested in people that make history, record history and study history. Thank you. Now, I do, and these slides, these images on screen, I have to thank Leamington History Group for, for them. And uh, I'm very grateful to, for, for the great resource, uh, great uh, web, website resource that is um, provided by the History Group. So I ask you to regard uh, the artists, Elizabeth Whitehead and her brother, Frederick Whitehead, as representatives of the very many Leamington people who have made history, even if in the case of um, the Whiteheads, their focus was artistic and they wouldn't necessarily have recognized that their activities were contributing to future history. I haven't time to focus on the Whiteheads in detail, but through the records they left and the subsequent study of those records, their place in local and in national history has, has been mapped out. And it comes back to this idea that I want to just share that the history of Leamington is as much about the people um, and the ideas uh, that are generated by them, even if they move out of the Leamington area. Um, so Elizabeth, an artist and um, the images, thanks to Leamington Art Gallery, you'll see it's Coventry, the old manor house. Um, and I just wanted to flag that up and uh, an accompanying uh, print um, from Frederick, which I'll go to now. Um, so this is Frederick's contribution. Um, it's of the birthplace, Shakespeare's birthplace in Stratford upon Avon, and this um, painting, the images provided by Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. These artworks um, 
they they reflect the role of cultural and heritage institutions in promoting the study of history. I mentioned earlier that my work in Stratford upon Avon regularly brings me into contact with um, the history of Leamington and its people. And through this painting, that's one, one route, and uh, we, we need to reflect on the, the subjects that uh, Elizabeth and um, Frederick um, focused on, and their, their um, actual their recording through artistic means of scenes from the Warwickshire, including um, Warwick and Coventry and Stratford and their contributions and, and um, in, in, in my case for Frederick, the, uh, the uh, illustrations of scenes from Shakespeare's County that Frederick produced um, and had published. Um, so the, 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 the work of Frederick in my case is, is part of the museum collection at uh, um, uh, Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. And uh, if we factor in the 300 plus books that are contained in the birthplace library that relates um, in some way to Leamington Spa, and then the 1100 plus records that are held in the archives there that refer to, to Leamington, there is um, a big pool of re resource for research into the local um, history. And uh, just to flag that the earliest record that the birthplace uh, holds relating to Leamington Spa is from the 13th century, um, a list of properties uh, for Kenilworth Priory, um, of course, according to Leamington Priors. Um, so if this is the situation in the archives of the Birthplace Trust, which has focused completely not to do with Leamington Spa, um, just think of the resources that are available for history, um, the, the study of history at um, the County Record Office in Warwick and also at the Leamington Museum. Now, my final slide is, um, uh, you'll, you'll probably recognise it, um, um, not, it's fading away, a very famous photograph by Henry Pete Robinson, who you'll be aware of, had his studio for many, many years in the um, Upper Parade in Leamington. I haven't time to um, talk about uh, Henry Pete Robinson. And that's a whole lecture in its own right. Um, I just want to flag that he certainly made history, recorded history, and um, allowed others to study history through, through his work. Um, he was the king of photographic picture making and was um he was a nationally renowned photographer in his lifetime in the victorian period but he's um a, an internationally renowned photographer as his work's been reappraised and just to give you some information about fading away it's his most famous photograph it's a blend of um, the reality, the reality and the artificial, and it took five separate negatives to produce that image. Thank you very much. Um, I've, I've put my contact details up on screen and uh, the website of the three societies which I've referenced to. And just to re reinforce that I don't speak in any official capacity for the Dugdale Society. Thank you very much and I'm happy to take questions.